Thank you, Madam President, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates. At the outset, I congratulate the Presidency of this COP28 for hosting this conference and thank the Government of UAE for extending a warm hospitality to my delegation. Madam President, I bring the message of 30 million Nepali people to this conference. Our message is clear. Mountains are tortured by rising temperature. Save them first. I am deeply concerned about the finding of the recent IPCC report that states climate-induced disaster-breaking records in the Himalayas. We have already lost one-third of our glaciers. And scientists have warned that we are going to lose another one-third by the end of this century. This is a wake-up call to all of us. The Himalayas are foundation of human civilization, ecosystem and biodiversity. They are providing global services to the people and the planet and are the source of livelihood for, for billions of people downstream. Madam President, Nepal is bearing a direct disproportionate the damaging effect of climate change despite despite near zero contribution to global emissions. Due to an appalling injustice inflicted on us, our people are severely affected by climate-induced disasters such as landslide, floods, wildfire, glacier lake outburst, drought, etc. This is an utter injustice. This must stop now. In his opening remarks yesterday, the United Nations Secretary General said, and I quote, Just days ago, I was on the melting ice of Antarctica. Not long ago, I was among the melting glaciers of Nepal. These two spots are far in distance, but united in the crisis, unquote. Similarly, in his recent visit to Nepal, he said further, and I quote, stop war against the nature, unquote. This was his reaction after having witnessed the disastrous impact of climate change in the mountains. Indeed, it is a war against nature as well as humanity. We are waging war with ourselves and the future generation only to satisfy our short-sighted and self-serving interest. So, I stand here for climate justice for my innocent people who are sheer victim of this catastrophe. Madam President, recently I un unveiled the National Adaptation Plan and NDC Implementation Guideline which clear with clear roadmap and strategies. Nepal is fully committed to the Paris Agreement. We are committed to achieving a net zero greenhouse gas emission by 2045, five years earlier than the global target. We will fully utilize our hydropower potential to secure the clean energy and maintain 45% forest covered land. However, our attempts to implement climate change adaptation and mitigation plans are facing serious financial and technical technological gaps. LDCs are more vulnerable to the impact of the climate change and are in desperate need of financial and technological support. As the chair of the LDCs, I urge the developed economies and international community for more predictable, predictable, adequate, and equitable resource and technology for LDCs. Countries like Nepal are left behind to live on their own fate. Therefore, I want to reiterate the following points. Number one, 
developed countries pledges and action do not correspond with their with each other they must raise their ambitions and fulfill their commitment urgently number 2 they must scale up climate finance to make up for the us dollar 100 billion shortfall and double the adaptation finance by 2025 and ensure fair financial arrangement without condition constant and compliance third we demand grants as our justice to address this crisis the loss and damage fund must be predictable simplified and adequate for ldcs and mountainous countries The GST report must give a clear road map to all and we must act in solidarity with urgency. Number 6 finally I strongly recommend the necessity of initiating a dialogue on mountain and climate change. I wish a grand success of this conference. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much your excellency. I would kindly like